Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I am very, very happy to have you here with me today. I wasn't actually planning on making a video this morning, but I made this loaf of sourdough. And as you guys know, I have been working on perfecting sourdough over the last couple of months. And I feel like I'm starting to figure it out a little bit. If you went online right now and you typed in how to make sourdough bread and you watched five different videos or read five different sets of instructions on how to do it, you're probably going to find that they are all different. And there's things that each baker does that are ju just a little bit different than the others. And that can be really confusing and overwhelming. I would really encourage you though, that if you are interested in making your own sourdough bread, that um, don't be discouraged if it doesn't work the first couple of times you're doing it. Um, definitely reach out, reach out to me in the comment section or over on Instagram if you're having any issues. I'm not an expert at sourdough bread making by any stretch of the imagination, but I might be able to help you troubleshoot um, some of the challenges that you're having. And hopefully we can get you to the point where you have a beautiful loaf of sourdough bread. So let's cut into this bread right now. I'm really happy with the way the inside of this bread looks. So let's do a little slice. I really like this crunchy bit right here. So I'm gonna slice that off. Favorite piece right there. So good, I love sourdough bread so much. When I first started making sourdough bread about 10 years ago or so, I um, and I wasn't consistent. I don't know if I mentioned that, I just made it a few times and then made it a few times each year ever since. It's only now that I'm actually getting really consistent with it. But I wasn't able to eat sourdough bread for a really long time. It gave me super bad heartburn. I don't know what was going on kind of with my intestinal system at the time, but I just couldn't eat it. But I am very grateful to say that that is no longer the case and I can eat sourdough bread because it is my favorite bread. It is so delicious. Okay, let's make some sourdough bread, shall we? So this is going to take all day. We're going to make the sourdough uh, or start making the bread, but I wanna take you through each step of it. So I won't be actually baking this bread until tonight. I might put it in the fridge and do it tomorrow morning, but either way, in this video, I'll show you the entire process from beginning to end. I've already run through how to do a starter, so I'll link that video in the show notes for you and up here as well and you can go and check that out. I have switched to using a glass bowl and this bowl is not super clean. I need to wash this one again. One of you had shared with me at some point a couple videos ago that using metal bowls can actually be counter intuitive. That's not the right word, counterproductive when it comes to bread making because metal is antibacterial and antimicrobial. And because you're dealing with bacteria and microbes and all that stuff when you're bread making, it can actually cause you to have not as good of a rise. So I did a bunch of research on that and there's actually varying opinions about that, of course, as there is with most things. As I do with most things, I tried to experiment with that myself and come to my own conclusions based on my own experience. And I can say for me personally, my bread is definitely getting a much better rise using the glass bowls than using the metal bowls. So that's what I'm gonna to continue to do. I haven't transferred over um, to using glass bowls for my yeast breads, like traditional yeast breads. I didn't wash it yet, <laughs> good grief. Hang on one sec, I'm just gonna wash this. Uh, like I was saying, I haven't transferred over to glass bowls for my um, regular yeast breads yet, but I do want to. I just need a much larger bowl than this one. This one works great for doing one loaf of sourdough. I start with around a half a cup of sourdough starter, give or take. I don't measure at all when it comes to the starter. I do measure with the water and the flour, but not with the starter, just kind of eyeball it. So that is a generous half a cup. When I shared this utensil and mentioned that I absolutely love it so much, uh, many of you commented saying that it's called a spurtle. So I did a little bit of reading on it and this is originally a Scottish utensil, but I basically use it for everything. It is my favorite kitchen utensil right now. So now I am going to add some lukewarm water 
two cups and stir in the starter until it's all dissolved in the water. So you could use a whisk for this, but like I was just talking about when it comes to using metal, with bread making, I am just finding that I am preferring to use glass and wood. I'm going to be using all-purpose white flour. So like I do with my uh, yeast bread, I add my flour a little bit at a time just because it makes it a lot easier to mix in. So I start with two cups. So I'm gonna add one more cup of flour, mix that in. And instead of skipping through this step of where I would normally kind of cut out here and then show what it looks like once it's all mixed, I actually wanna show you how long it takes to mix it in and just the whole process so that for those of you that are visual learners, you can get a really good idea of how it's supposed to look with each stage. So there we go. Now we're going to add one more cup of flour. Again, we're going to mix it all in. And normally it's about four cups of flour is what I need for this recipe. So just keep mixing and mixing and mixing until all of the flour is well incorporated. And it's going to look kind of thick like this, but as all of those yeasts start doing their job and the gluten starts being, I don't know if the word is activated or what the, the actual technical word is for that, but once that starts happening, then this will start to be smoother. So at this point, if you have looked at the book that I recommended or at other recipes, some people will add the salt in at this stage, but I do not. I let it sit for half an hour. So there, that's about what I'm looking for. I will let this sit for half an hour before I add my salt. And I always, always, always wash off my wooden utensils right away. Don't leave them sitting in the sink or in water or anything like that. Number one, it's impossible to get the bread dough off at that point. But number two, they're wooden utensils and they shouldn't be sitting in water because it does damage them. Now I'm gonna add a damp tea towel to this and I like to fold my tea towel in half because it doesn't dry out as quickly. And then we'll set our timer for 30 minutes and then add the salt. I've been having a craving for scalloped potatoes. And so, and I don't know if the way that I do it is actually technically scalloped potatoes, but I'll show you what I do. It's very delicious. And I think I'll pull out one of those really small hams. I did two really huge hams that, that will need like 24 hours to thaw, but I did a couple of smaller ones. So maybe I'll pull one of those um, out or maybe two of them. And we'll do ham and scalloped potatoes and maybe some corn or something. But we'll get onto the scalloped potatoes right away. And we will go down and get some potatoes from the root cellar. And I have separated out the first batch of piglets that were born back at the beginning of December um, into a pen by themselves in the barn. So we'll go down and check those guys out. I have, I think three of them are going this weekend. And then a couple more of them are going later on in the week. And then we have the next batch that won't be ready until the end of February. So they're outside with mom now and all happy being outside. You know what I need to do before we go out and do that though, is feed my sourdough starter. So I'm not sure if you can see, but there's just under around half a cup of starter in there. And this jar is starting to get kind of grimy looking. So I'm gonna start a fresh jar. Okay, so we are going to add some of our starter to here. So a half a cup of flour to a quarter cup of water. Try to resist the urge to scrape your utensil off on the edge of your jar because that tends to be what makes a mess out of the jar. 
I just put my lid sitting it on the top. I don't use a screw top on this. And I did have several people write to me and say that they were having issues with getting their starter going. So if that, if you are having that as an issue, I would recommend just putting a piece of fabric on the top with a, um, an elastic band, just so that you can have airflow happening. You can be get, allowing the yeasts to get into your jar and into your flour. They're going to pick up a ton, just even just having it like this off for a second. But I find that that does help get it active faster. And like I have mentioned before, always, 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 when you're doing any kind of fermenting at all, put your um, jars on a plate. So that way, if you have anything overflowing, which I promise you, you will have probably a couple of times, if you're gonna start doing this regularly, it doesn't get all over your counter and make a big mess. So it is two degrees, which is around, what is that? 31 or so degrees. These guys are doing absolutely fantastic and they are humongous. We wean at eight weeks with our piglets and their moms are very much ready for weaning at this point. They actually aren't letting them nurse very often. They just lay on their stomachs and won't roll over for them. So it is kind of a natural time for them to be weaned off and they are going to be going to their new homes very soon. These piglets here are actually only just about five weeks old. They are massive compared to the other ones. The other ones are just a little bit bigger than them and they're four weeks older than these piglets. So nice job, Dinah. Where's the rest of your babies? There's another one. What you doing, cutie? Run, run, run. We actually have these two ladies for sale here, this white girl and this brown one up over here. I've talked about this before, but we are not going to have goats on our farm anymore. So they are going to go to a new home, hopefully very soon. And this weekend, we are going to be going and picking up our new sheep. So we're, if you didn't see, I think I did a post a couple of days ago on the community tab where I shared that we were getting Romney sheep. I'm really excited about this. We have tried raising different animals on our property and we have concluded that due to the amount of hay that we have that we can make here, the amount of pasture we have and all of that, that smaller livestock is a better fit for us than um, larger livestock. So, so we are going to keep our dairy cows, of course, a couple of dairy cows, but as far as the actual farm and production and all of that, we are going to get into sheep. Um, Romneys are good dual purpose sheep. So for meat and for wool, and we'll be raising them for both. One of my kids is so sweet and shoveled the pathway again for me down to the root cellar. This is the perfect amount of potatoes, this bag right here. So I will grab that bring the whole thing up. The rest of the root cellar is looking good. Carrots looking good. Looks like Dan is back from the dump. We don't have garbage pickup out here, of course, and the nearest transfer station for garbage is about half an hour from here. So we use our stock trailer with big bins in it to store our garbage in and then when it gets full, then we take it to the dump. So he had to get it all emptied out so that he could go through the stock trailer and make sure that everything is good for a trip to go get our sheep. These potatoes are looking fantastic. Still nice and firm, no sprouting. Wonderful. So I'm just going to give these a wash off. Not going to peel them for this recipe. Normally I would use white onions for this recipe, but since I have red, that's what I'm going to use. While we're down here, let's take a peek at the grow room. Oh, makes me happy just coming in here because it smells so good. These are the lentils and one thing I did learn about this, this is the first time I've done lentils, is that I could do the seeds way more densely than I did. And then we have alfalfa and our beautiful tomatoes. So can you see all these flowers that are coming on? This is gonna seem kind of brutal, but I am going to pull off these flower buds because I was just talking to Ash from Ash's Heirloom Seeds and she's where I get these seeds from about whether or not I should pull them off at this point. And she said, yes, if I had potted them up already into their final pots, 
then I wouldn't be pulling the flowers off. I would let them stay. There's another one there. But because I haven't potted them up yet, um, the plant goes into a little bit of shock after it's been potted up. And about two weeks after that, it'll start sending out more. But I am gonna have to get these put into their final pots here very soon. Probably, I might even do that later on today. These are going to go into one gallon pots, all these little plants. And these guys look like they could use some water. I always get asked about bottom watering whenever I show myself watering. Sometimes I do, but for the most part, I water from the top and I just always have done it this way. Um, I haven't had lentils as microgreens before. Super curious on the flavor. Let's give one a try. This is a very strong flavored green. I'm not a huge fan. This will be something I think I'll add to salads. I wouldn't add this to a sandwich and just have this in it because it is really strong. Okay, our half an hour is up. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to add my salt to this now. And I add just about a tablespoon of salt. Seems like a lot of salt, but that's what, um, what just works for me and makes the flavor really good on the bread. I like to dampen my fingers before I start messing around with it so that they don't stick. So I'm gonna pull this and fold it over on itself to mix in the salt. Can you see how much smoother it is already? I just do this a couple times. I don't know, maybe six or seven times. That's what it's gonna look like. I'm going to cover it again. And for the next three hours, whenever I think of it, but around every half an hour or so, I'm going to do the same thing I just did by folding it over like that about five times. And I'll show you as we progress so that you can see how the texture changes of the bread through each step. Cover it up again with our damp cloth. And now we're gonna chop up some onions. Alice sent me these goggles. So these are actually specifically for chopping onions. And I've never seen anything like this before. You can see how they have a, um, like a foamy part around to kind of block off the mist from getting into your eyes. And Alice said that she had had these sitting in her drawer in her kitchen for a long time. And then she saw me mention them and decided to send them to me. Aren't those fantastic? So we're gonna try them out and see if they work. I haven't tried them yet. I look like I'm an aviator or something, don't I? How'd it go? Scalloped potatoes and ham. Oh shoot, can you actually out in that freezer grab those two small hams? They're labeled that are in there. I'm gonna use the two small ones, not the big ones. Thank you. I'm gonna put our hams in the sink for them to thaw a bit. We'll cook those up later on this afternoon. They won't take long to cook because they're pretty small. I hope the flavor is good. So for this recipe, I'm gonna be cutting these onions so that they are kind of long, thin pieces rather than bite size. So more like this. I didn't get all the skin off that one. I almost broke my own rule and did not wash and dry my wooden utensil. It was sitting in the sink when I went outside. Okay, let's scrub up some potatoes. And the kids are gonna give me a hand to get these all cut so it shouldn't take us longer than 10 minutes to get these all chopped up okay our potatoes are <laughs> it's a dropping day today i think that's the third time i have dropped something in this video alone so let's get into putting this together and then we'll go make the sauce so we're just gonna put a layer of potatoes on the bottom and you can get all fancy with this if you like. 
and then some onion. More potatoes. I'm going to add a good amount of butter, around half a cup. The more butter, the better in white sauce, in my opinion, especially in the case of making scallop potatoes. I'm going to throw our minced garlic in there as well. I'm just gonna give my sourdough a stretch. So can you see how much shinier and smoother it is? So exactly as I did before, I am going to let this cook up until the garlic starts to soften a little bit. I really don't want this to get super brown though. I know a lot of people like the flavor of browned butter, but I am not a fan. A couple of tablespoons of flour. And a couple more. So I'm wanting it to look like this before I add my milk. And for this part, I am going to use a whisk and add my milk a little bit at a time. Let it thicken in between additions. I don't know. I don't really have a lunch plan yet. And then we're going to pour our sauce over our potatoes. And now we're going to cover these with tin foil. I'm going to bake those potatoes at 350 for around an hour. And once they are cooked just about through, I'll take them out and put them on the top of the stove and just leave them there until I need them for dinner time. And then I'll pop them back in the oven again for probably 20 minutes or so with cheese on top until it gets all bubbly and delicious. So good. All my kids saw me making that as they were walking past and we're very excited because it has been a long time since we've had scallop potatoes. I'm not sure why it's such an easy, delicious thing to make. Do you ever find that where sometimes a recipe that you've made a ton, you just stop making for some reason and then you realize a couple years later that you haven't made something delicious that your family actually really enjoys in a really long time? Happens to us all the time. We are going to stop for lunch now, but we'll be back with you again in a little while and I will show you some more of the folding. It's basically the same thing that I've been showing you, pulling the dough up and folding it over on itself. And I'm going to do that two more times before we set it aside and leave it to sit until we're going to bake it up tonight. I just had a lovely nap. For those of you that are new here, I am a huge advocate of the afternoon nap. It completely recharges me for the rest of the day. I find if I don't have a rest in the afternoon, like after lunchtime, that I am just unreasonably exhausted by two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And I don't really ever get a second wind, but if I have a nap, then I wake up feeling refreshed and ready to go again. For many years, I would feel lazy if I laid down during, during the day to have any type of rest whatsoever. But when I had my last baby, I was 39 years old and a nap was an absolute, an absolute requirement for my sanity because I wasn't getting any sleep at night, of course, and I was also older. It is a very different experience having a newborn when you are in your late 30s than it is when you are in your 20s as far as just how tired you are. I mean, you're tired in your 20s with a newborn too, for sure, but it's just a different kind of tiredness when you're older because you're already starting to get a little tired as it is. I woke up with a hankering for cinnamon buns, so I am going to make a batch of cinnamon buns if I can find my yeast, which I know is in here because I just filled up the bag the other day when I was making a video. So, aha, there it is. 
I'm not going to use a recipe for this. I'm just gonna kind of wing it. So we'll do, I don't know, a tablespoon and a half of yeast, four cups of lukewarm water. I almost never have cream cheese. And when we went to Costco, I think that was Costco we got it at. Yes, it was. We ended up buying some cream cheese. I think eight packs of it or something like that. And I still have some left. So I'm going to make some cream cheese frosting for these as well, which will thrill my children since I normally don't. Normally I'll make like sticky buns, but not with the cream cheese frosting. So they will be quite happy. So what else should I put in here? Let's put some melted butter. Okay, let's melt around a quarter cup of butter. And our potatoes I just took out of the oven and they are pretty much done. Okay, I am going to add around a quarter cup of honey to this. You do want to make a sweet dough, at least I like a sweet dough when it comes to cinnamon buns. <laughs> you didn't know I was making cinnamon buns. <laughs> I did the last stretch on the sourdough bread. So you can see there. So at this point, I could put this in the refrigerator and let it do what's called its bulk fermentation in the fridge overnight. But because I really want to show you guys the full entire process of making this, I'm going to wait until this evening, probably around six o'clock or so, and then I'll form the loaves. And I've had success doing it both ways. I've also had success with just leaving it on the counter overnight and making bread this morning. The one that I did this morning was um, made that way and it was great. I think that um, sourdough bread is a lot more forgiving than it may seem when you're doing research on it online because it can seem so complicated, but I have personally found it to be more forgiving than I thought it was when I started, that's for sure. If you are melting your butter and you let it get too hot and then you dump it straight in with your yeast, you can actually kill your yeast. So I just try to melt it just enough so it's melted and then add some of my flour and then add the butter just so that that warm butter isn't going straight in to the yeast and it is too warm in here for a sweater right now. And like with all of my breads, adding the flour slowly. Making a bread like this where I'm not using a recipe and I don't know exactly how much flour I'm going to need. I really make sure that I allow the flour to absorb the moisture as I'm adding the flour to the recipe so that I don't add too much flour because it is very difficult to mix water in with a bread dough that's already really thick. So I'd rather add slowly and not have to add extra water. Good pinch of salt. And I think I'm gonna throw a couple eggs in here too. Eggs give dough a little bit more of a cakey texture. If I had thought about this before, I would have added the eggs in with my water, but that's all right. really should have put on my apron <laughs> before I did this. This is one time in which an apron is invaluable. This is for hand kneading bread. 
I wasn't strong enough to mix all of the flour that I needed for this recipe in with my spoon as I was stirring it. So I'm actually adding the extra flour I need in while I'm kneading, which is why I'm being so liberal with the flour. Oh boy, I'm only halfway through my eight minutes. Oh, but you can see that I'm starting to get there. Slowly but surely, really is an excellent workout. What I'm looking for is a nice soft dough like this. This is just about there. I think we are good. Okay, a little smear of olive oil. I smear it around like this so that the bottom part of my bread that I'm gonna flip over to the top has some oil in it so that my towel doesn't stick. So now we'll let that rise for an hour. Clean up our big old mess that I always make in my kitchen. Our timer just went off for our cinnamon bun dough. Looks great. I love when I make dough with eggs, especially when they're farm eggs and they're really yellow because it makes the dough kind of have a bit of a yellow tinge to it. So we'll grab some of our flour. Because my butter is frozen, I am going to melt it. Okay, now we will cover these up and let them rise for around 30 minutes. Definitely made a bit more of a mess using the melted butter rather than spreading cold butter on. Ooh, smells good. I will definitely put the link for the brine that I used for this ham down in the show notes because it is incredible. It's so good. Oh my goodness. That is delicious. So what I'm going to do is set this aside because they are cooked through. That would be really good with a honey glaze too. I just love it when things work out. When it comes to something that I don't have a ton of experience with, like curing hams, I've done it before, but not enough to feel like I really know what I'm doing. I'm just thrilled with it because it was something new. Like I tried something new. <laughs> I'm so putting that in the video. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Cinnamon buns are ready to go into the oven. And I will bake these at 350 for about 20 minutes. And then I'll check on them and see if they need a little bit more time. I love scalloped potatoes. I know, they're so delicious, aren't they? We have our buns that are ready to come out of the oven delicious smelling cinnamon buns. And I have decided that we're gonna actually have these for breakfast tomorrow because we are going out of town for the day to go get our sheep. And this will be a yummy thing to start out the day and then we don't have to make breakfast in the morning. 
Okay, now we pop these in the oven. So these are already cooked through, so I just need to heat them up. Ham is done. Corn will be done in a minute. The frosting is done, but I'm not going to add the frosting until I've had a chance to cool off. Once I get everybody fed, I will show you how to do the sourdough. And this is the fun part of doing sourdough is forming the loaves and scoring the top of it and then putting it in the oven. And it always comes out different every time. And it's kind of like a little surprise when you open up the lid. So I'll show you that. But right now I need my gloves. I need to take these potatoes out of the oven. Are you starving? Are you so ready to eat some yumminess? We'll give those a couple more minutes. They're almost done. And two. I'm hungry too. This doll smells so good. It smells so good. There's one. That's Matthew. I am going to preheat my Dutch oven. I only make bread in or sourdough bread in a Dutch oven. It just works the best. I always get asked about this because it's an unusual shape. This one's a Paderno brand, which is from Canadian Tire. And our oven is preheated to 450 and we will have that in there while we do the next step. Here is what our dough is looking like. My youngest has a very, shall we say, sensitive palate when it comes to food, and she thought that the ham was delicious, which is awesome. Put it on the counter like so. <clears throat> Oh, you can see I iced the cinnamon buns over here. So now I am going to spread this out a little bit. Give it a little stretch. And then kind of fold it in on itself. So now I am going to increase the surface tension of this bread. You see all the air bubbles in there. And the best way to do that, I find, I kind of shape it like so. And then as it gets a little bit sticky, I start to pull it towards myself. And I do that a few times until it is the shape that I want it to be. And there's lots of surface tension. So now I've just sat this on a little bit of flour on the counter and I'm gonna let it rest for 15 minutes. Cover it with my damp cloth. And while this is sitting and resting, I am going to take my proofing basket. So this is just a rattan basket with a cotton lining. And what I like to use for this and what is recommended is some white rice flour. And the reason is that the white rice flour does not burn as easily as the whole wheat flour does. So I am pretty liberal with that so that it doesn't stick. Now we're gonna take our loaf and very carefully pick it up and put it the nice smooth side down in our proofing basket like so and then we're going to cover this up and leave this for 30 minutes so we are now on to our next step with our bread we're going to take our hot 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 pan out of the oven very hot and we are going to tip our bread carefully upside down and carefully put it inside. This is called a bread lame. It's just a little, very sharp knife. And I am going to cut quite deeply. Thank <laughs> you. 
put our lid back on and we're gonna bake this at 350 for 30 minutes. So now we are going to remove the lid and cook it with the lid off for another 20 minutes. Here we go, my friends. Are you ready? Little kitty, scooch. Out of the way, out of the way. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Can you hear it crackling? Isn't that beautiful? So there you go, my friends. That is how you make a loaf of sourdough bread. It is not as difficult as it might seem. That is it for us today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.